Okay. So, I usually take the shoulder pads off. And so, I mean, you have to make a decision there, but obviously you go full pads hard yesterday, and you talk about depth and all those things still. I mean, is there an injury concern in that, or you just have well, to do what you have to do? I, I think you, you have to, um, it's a risk-reward situation. If we were to get somebody dinged, which you did not, but the, but the overall development of our team might outweigh the situation of getting maybe somebody dinged up. I guess that's how I viewed it. The team right. needed to go out and practice physical. The team needs to get back into, in, in, into okay, bam, we got six games in a row, and we got a very good football team coming in here this week. And so that, that was our thinking as a staff, and my thinking as the head coach. Um, and uh, now as we go through the week, we're still going to do some things physically, and uh, we're, not, we're not pulling off of them. We won't. But we're just going to taper the practice as we go, and, and um, cl clearly we're all focused on Ohio U at this time. Um, the uh, I mean, not that you would make changes, but with Bice and Kasparic out again, they say they may come back next. I mean, if, even if you wanted to do something, I mean, there's really not many options. On not many options, line. you know. Um, Dylan Brumball's been up practicing with us. I say us with the with the with the travel squad, with the offense, and not been on the scout team. Uh, but you have. Uh, we have Vinny Rizzo, we have, you know, Jake Anderson's been terrific, you have Mitch Strait, you have McCluskey, um, you have Travis Schweitzer, and uh, that's what we got. Has Michael Leo been in a game yet? Michael Leo played some at, the, some at the end of EMI. He's also up practicing with the travel squad. Um, so in practice, we are clearly rotating more guys in that offensive line than in practice than we maybe are having the game. So there are some other candidates there as we keep moving <coughs> forward here. A guy like a Brumbaugh, though, you would prefer not to play him if you don't have to. We would to prefer not to, yes. After uh, <coughs> reviewing the first half of the year, has there been any significant personnel changes or guys you see that are going to be playing more than they did before? Probably not. Um, you know, I, th I think we, we've kind of settled into who, who the guys are. Um, we just got to get those guys to play better and, and uh, on all three phases. You know, we always tweak our special teams depth based upon if somebody's injured or somebody this, but I don't really see any real significant um, changes. And out of curiosity, too, you were talking about recruiting. When you're going in and you're talking to coaches at a specific school. How much do you go for, from their word compared to maybe a coach in their league talking about? Well, I, th I think it's all about relationships. And as you know, so we go into high school and we, we have a we we'll follow the relationship with the high school coach, and he's um, he gonna be a guy that gives you accurate information, which they will. Then, then we go with that. But you got to do your research, and you got to do your research on guys um, because you know we get one time to go out in the fall, and then you're not back out to December, and you're making decisions, and so you got to do your research. And the research is with the high school coach, who know him the best. And we got you know see a great, um, great high school coaches in the state of Ohio. The research is with the guidance counselor. Um, the research is with, a, you know, with an opposing coach um, that, you, that you would have confidence in giving you great opinions. So I think you try to run the gamut of things to research. And, and with the staff, with us being in the same areas now, um, clearly for our second full season of recruiting, we develop rapports with high school coaches. And high school coaches develop rapports with us. And we lean on them heavily. Is it a tough sell trying to get uh Athletes to come to Akron, considering the struggles you guys have uh, seen. Oh, I think it's a great weeks. opportunity, and I think guys see, see, see that way also, and they see the great investment the university's made in our football program, and guys want to be part of something um, where what they do, spend a majority of their time every day on, is important. And clearly, football is important here at the University of Akron, and we make no bones about the fact that we're building a program, and when you build a program, you you have to take systematic steps to get to the, where you want to be unless you're willing to take shortcuts, which we won't. Because if you take shortcuts, then you don't, you might get to where you want to be, but you won't stay there. And when you build a championship program, you don't take shortcuts. You just methodically build it, and when you get there, you don't look back. With uh, Marquello Sewell coming back and the development of Skyners, is that depth in the wide receiver? Is that looking at as a strength, one of the strengths of the football? Well, you, you hope so. As we move forward, because obviously Keith has played well in the first um, half of the year. A.J. Price has certainly, I think, improved. He made a very difficult you know, heck of a catch in our last game. Um, you know, Gerard Dillard has played well, and, and um, Antoine was in that, in, that, in that mix, and now with um, Marquello. So, I mean, I, I'm hopeful. We'll see, you know, and um, as we go forward here. Certainly having a back is, 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 a, is a bonus for us. Yeah. Coach, you, um, 
You mentioned during the off week you self scouted and there were things you're doing well and things that you needed to work on. What what are those? What are the things you're doing well? Right well, now? I think we're running the ball well. Um, you know, in, in a uh, very broad stroke here, <coughs> Frank, without getting into specific details, we're running the football well, um, but clearly we, we our drop back passing game has to improve, and particularly our third down. Um, conversions has to improve. So we looked at those real closely about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and what we maybe need to do better. On defense, obviously, we looked at our um, um, ourselves. We've we given up a um, number of big foot, big plays in games. Um, so what, what has caused those big plays? Has it been schematics or has it been um, just somebody not being in the right place? Or what, what has gotten us there? And the special teams, you know, um, I think our coverage units will probably be our kickoff coverage unit has improved, but we looked at that very closely and looked at our punt return uh, unit you know, very closely. Because those are the two that um, probably, definitely, I think we need to improve the most here in the last you know, part of the season. But with Clayton, I mean, he's obviously a competitor. He makes plays with his legs, keeps plays alive. But at the same time, he sometimes gets careless with the ball. How do you rein him in, but not take away from his competitiveness and well, his playmaking? <laughs> You know, he hadn't thrown an interception in a couple of games until last week, and um, the ball was tipped. Um, and I think if we looked at his interceptions, which we did, um, there's, there's not many that he has thrown that were not, um, he was not getting hit or harassed or, or something in that regard. Very few of those have been just him straight drop back passing and throwing the ball where, you know, to the wrong guy. And. Um, so we talk about ball security all the time. It's on the wall right here. And so we're not going to take away his aggressiveness, but we're going to continue to talk to him about playing within the structure of the offense. And as he continues to grow in the offense, he's six games into it. As he continues to grow, then um, I'm confident that those things will continue to improve. What, uh, on third now, what's been, has it been just third and too long? Or is it, it, no, actually against, you know, we, we, we've had some issues in, in the more manageable 32 to five area. Um, you know, we, we you know, certainly first and second down greatly affects third down. So when we looked at staying ahead of the change and staying on schedule. That's a very important element as far as third down goes. But we've got to do a much better job of converting the third and manageable ones. Third and one, we've been fine. It's been third and two and three and four and five that um, I would have thought the percentage would be much higher. AJ Fox drilled that field goal in yeah. the last game. Is that is the tryout process over now? So you know, number one? <laughs> he, is, he is the place kicker and he is the kickoff man. So OU, as you mentioned, you know, at least part of the time running more of a spread. I mean, that's something new for them, isn't it? Or is that? That's something that they changed to. They, they were a gun team running the quarterback, uh, but I think they're clearly throwing it um, with a much higher efficiency level than, than certainly the last year's team that we played. And um, I just feel like they, they obviously feel strongly about Tattleton as their quarterback and they had some good young quarterbacks in, in their program and they made this change and it's been, I think it's been extremely positive for them. To the detriment of the rest of the league, I think it's been a very positive move for them. So, I mean, they do have good numbers and a lot of good players. They've also been close with loss of last two yeah. games. What, what happened in those? Well, I just think this is a hard league. And, on any given Saturday, if you know whoever makes those plays will have a chance to win the games. And they've been in two real hard fourth quarter games, and one was on the road, and one was at home, and they had chances in both those games at the end to you know either tie to go to overtime or get ahead. Um, but you know, um, so I think you give Ball State and you give uh, Buffalo credit, and certainly Ohio U is a very good football team, and a play here or a play there, and, and those games are in the win column for them. This is, this is a league that a lot of games are going to go down to the fourth quarter. If you look at last week around our league, which I had a chance to look around the league on a severe Saturday of not playing, um, you know, Ohio U and Ball State was a four-quarter game, went down to the end. Kent and Miami went down to the end. Eastern Michigan and Central Michigan went down to the end. Toledo and Bowling Green went down to the end. That's the kind of league we have. There's a lot of really good coaches and really good players and really good teams. And... Um, I think you'll see that being the case every week. Draw mm -hmm. a good point on that. Um, the last two games, obviously, in at the very end, make some plays here and there, go either way. Um, biggest thing is make you guys learn how to win. How do you how do you preach that? How do you get them over the edge to learn how to win? 
Well, so you, you, um, you keep working at it. You just keep playing. And what I was really pleased with with our team in, in our previous outing is we just kept playing. And we got down, we fought back to make it 2017. All right? They went ahead 27-17. We came back down the field to potentially make it, a, it was gonna be a one score game, I hope, either way. We just kept playing. So you just keep playing and then you have to find those plays. You know, somewhere on the field, somebody's gotta make that play that's gonna get you over the top. And once we win one of those games, that's a four quarter game, it's a tight game, then I, hopefully I think that that'll be, give the team the confidence you need to be in those games and, uh, and, and know what it's gonna take to win them. And um, it's like the old adage, how to get experience, you need a job, how to get a job, you need experience. And uh, so I think we're a little bit in that regard here with, um, with our team. But I'm, I'm, we've been playing our butts off. Uh, and and uh, we just keep doing that and keep improving keep having improvement be the measuring stick of our program and, and stick to the process that we're going to be in those four quarter games as we proceed and um, we're going to get our share. I'm confident of that.